Hello my soccer universe, let's also talk about the conference league, yes last and in a way maybe the one that is the least watched, however I also have had to say that the big results and the big surprises came actually in the conference league where we had two Greek mega comebacks. First of Pauk overcoming a 2-0 deficit from the away leg. And winning big against Inamo Zagreb and then Olympiakos saying hold my beer what you can I can do better losing 4-1 at home and still advancing a bit in overtime we'll talk about these games we also had uh, Ajax being eliminated at the big one against um, Aston Villa and we had Lille and Sturm yeah, last Austrian team also already being eliminated but We'll start this review in Istanbul, where Fenerbahce had a 3-0 lead over Union saint gilles Yes, all the goals came late and it's basically went... Union saint gilles tried, couldn't do much, got the first goal. Actually, uh, they came in, uh, by Rasmus in the 68th minute, maybe there would have been a chance, but overall Fenerbahce eased through that. A similar story for Fiorentina, you know, uh, after having won this crazy first leg against Maccabi for 4-3, Antonin Barak in the 15th minute gave them the 1 0 lead. Fiorentina, of course, was the more, uh, the better team overall, but then Kalaili uh, late on makes an equalizer. A little bit of nerves there because if Maccabi would have made another goal, uh, it may have resulted in overtime. However, Fiorentina hang on and one of the favorite and are one of the favorites now to win the Conference League, which was to be expected. But the first big comeback, Greek comeback, was Pauk against Dinamo Zagreb. I mean, the 2-0, uh, they were not two goals worse in Zagreb. Uh, I think finishing let them down. Well, finishing did not let them down this, this, this time around. They were pressing. Uh, it seemed like Dinamo can hang on rather easily. By the way, why did Dinamo play in pink when Pauk can very, uh, you know, when Pauk played in black and white in Zagreb against the blue team? So this was one of those weird uh, choices again. In any, in, in any case, uh, it seems like they can hold through and then uh, Baba heads one in in the 27th minute and after assist by Kuliarakis, who is the player of that game. Kuliarakis then makes a great shot that he gets a wicked deflection by the chest from Sucic and goes into net 2 nil and after 33 minutes, so within a short succession of time, the 2 nil advantage of Dinamo Zagreb was gone. And then uh, Thomas in the 42nd even made it 3 0. So within 15 minutes, Pauk had turned around the 2 0 deficit in a lead. However, it was not to be an easy moving on for Pauk because Hosha in the 49th minute pulled one back, and there is where the game could have turned because Dinamo Zagreb had their chances. Uh, there needed to be some saves made. Uh, and it took until the 72nd minute when Kuliarakis, again him, with the two assists, although I think the, the second one should... It is his shot that got the big, big, big deflection. He heads it in uh, and it's 4-1. And then later on they also get a penalty. The Chivkovic converts 5-1 for Pauk. Pretty big win, wild scenes at the Tumba Stadium in Saloniki. Uh, and then in Pilsen, Servet and Pilsen play out a nil-nil. Uh, draw. It has to be said that Servette in uh, the Conference League have only scored in four games in the knockout stage a single goal, the one that uh, made them advance at Ludogorets. This time it goes all the way to penalties and uh, Pilsen goalie is the hero, saving two and the third. Third one was missed, uh, so um, Servette only convert the second penalty out of four. Despite going first, Pilsen can convert all three of theirs. Then the late game, I mean, if there was any hope that Ajax against uh, Aston Villa could turn out to be a great tie, well, I think Ajax would have had to come with a lead to Villa Park, but even then, it was never really in the cards. Uh, Aston Villa were the better team, they had a lot of dominance, overall outplayed Ajax. Uh, Oli Watkins, far, uh, far, far, far enough, uh, injured himself, I think, on a foul, but is then completely forgotten in the 25th minute after Douglas Lewis corner and Ken Head and had in and shortly off uh, afterwards comes off. Leon Bailey uh, in the 60th minute makes it 2-0. Then Ajax go down a man, Manaswerk uh, gets his second yellow, yellow card, and then uh, Duran and Musa Diaby uh, make it a proper scoreline. Uh, I think the Diaby goal was the one with all the step overs, which was a really nice one. Club Bruges 
Also, kind of expected against Molde, uh, win 3 nils Skov Olsen just before the halftime break, and right after the half, turn the deficit around and Skoras makes it uh, a 3 nil scoreline. Lille and Sturm Graz, another game that was not much to play well, because Lille had a 3 nil after half. one leg. Uh, they were the more dominant team, however, Sturm played much, much better, but a little bit better in, in the game. Uh, still, Santos and 43 or third minute gives Lille the lead. However, Biereth, just before the half, I mean, it looked like a Wüthrich goal, but Biereth got a few hairs on it. Uh, gets an equalizer and Sturm Graz can hang on. I mean, Sturm Graz had early chances, but overall, Lille were, were, were the better, better team, but you know, the game did not hurt uh, either one to be ending in the 1 1 draw. For Austria, it means that at least Sturm got more points. However, this is one of the worst performances of Austrian teams in a long time. And it also means that Austria is now losing three spots, not for the next season, but for the season thereafter. Uh, so uh, the champion and all the others need to go in qualification and there are no automatic places. Um, and yeah, the last two years for Austria have not been really, really good. So there will need to be another boost necessary. Definitely uh, the coefficient currently, yes, it helps that Salzburg made it in the Champions League, but if you don't make many points in the Champions League, that doesn't help for sure. So the last time it really helped was like two years ago when Salzburg made it through in the Champions League um, group stage and also Lusk won the Europa Conference League uh, group with five wins and a draw. And that got also plenty of points for Aust Austria, but it has been a long time that Austria have been um, really accruing many points. So, not so good overall. But let's leave the best for last. I mean, the best in term terms of result, if you are, I guess, a Bauk fan like I am, because you don't really care that much about. But it was really, really amazing what was happening. I mean, Yes, it was surely helped that the game could not be played in Tel Aviv. So uh, there was no fervent home support for Maccabi Te Te Tel Aviv. But on the other side, the Olympiakos had fervent home support uh, in the uh, first leg and lost 4-1 at home because Maccabi Tel Aviv were really, really hard on the countdown. Well, this time around, already at halftime, it was 3-0 for Olympiakos. It pole dance for Tunis and El Khabi just before the halftime break. Erasing the deficit. It is 3-3. Three, three. Uh, after the break, Zahavi re-establishes the lead for Maccabi on aggregate with a penalty. So may exit 1-3, but one, uh, eight minutes later, El Khabi again strikes and it scores a level, level again. It goes into overtime where Stefan Jovetic in the 93rd minute already puts Olympiakos on the uh, lead and then El, El, El Arabi in the 103rd makes it a 6-1 on the night and a 7 five on aggregate this is a crazy tie i think i've never seen that we had two such big away wins in a single tie and so ahead of the draw i did it already in the, for, for the europa league we had that villa are the big favorites but then fiorentina and lille relatively even fenerbahce in their club rouge in there and then the uh, pilsen and ahead of the two greek teams but overall you will see it's somewhere between aston villa fiorentina and Lille with Fenerbahce because they had this, you know, uh, typical, typical Turkish side. If you see them, you see a lot of names that you knew, but that they were great maybe five years ago. And now let's look at this draw. And uh, one tie sticks out. Yeah, two fav favorites are meeting with Aston Villa against Lille. The first one out was Club Bruges against Pauk. Um, you know, I, I was going into that. I, I wanted to see that Fiorentina get a good draw, that uh, Pauk get, get a good, good draw, the two teams that I care more, more most about. Club Bruges is a so-and-so draw for Pauk, I have to say. Um, I'd rather would, would, would have seen Pilsen pro, uh, pro, probably, but you know, uh, it is given that there could be the, the four favorites, it's probably a decent draw for Pauk. Right after Pauk was Olympiakos, and uh, part of me wanted to see a Greek duel in, in, in a way, but Olympiakos have to pay, play Fenerbahce, so a Greek-Turkish duel, mm, that could be an offer. Uh, I don't know how the relations are between these two clubs, but that seems to be a hot one. Uh, then Aston Villa were drawn against Lille. As I said, this is the big one. I mean, those are two fav 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 favorites, and now we will really see. I mean, if Aston Villa went that, that far, they might as well go for it. Um, I guess Aston Villa will win that tie. Uh, overall, we talk about that. And the last one was Victoria Pilsen hosting Fiorentina. 
probably the kindest draw that Fiorentina could get. If you look at the overall chances here, uh, it's very interesting that all of these ties have very similar favorites. I mean, Will is a 60-40 favorite over Lille. Similarly, Fenerbahce is 60-40 over Olympiacos, and those two will have to face, uh, the winners of these ties have to face Israel Ard in the semifinal, which also makes it kind of in interesting. I think we have... Um, Villa got a, a relatively rough bracket, or Lil, if if you'd like, because Fenerbahce uh, is definitely a better team. Whereas on the lower side, Fiorentina are pretty big favorites over Pilsen, and then they will play the winner against Club Bruges in Park, which is the most even tie, but still with a clear favorite in Club Bruges. However, in that quadrant, I think Fiorentina look like the favorites. So I think the upper bracket, again, is a little bit more loaded. Uh, if we look at the changes in the favorites, Club Bruges got the boost. Yes, they avoided many big teams, uh, but also so did Pauk and so did Olympiakos, curiously. Uh, but Olympiakos only because, uh, rose because Victoria Pilsen got Fiorentina, which is one of the worst draws that they could have gotten. Uh, it means now Villa ahead of Fiorentina, Club Rouge ahead of Fenerbahce and Lille. Lille losing the spots, of course, because they have to play uh, Villa. And you see Lille were in their chances almost level with Fiorentina. Fiorentina now is almost up there with Villa. Uh, but Club Rouge, Fenerbahce and Lille are relatively even overall. When will those matches be played? Well, same times as the Europa League. It's the 11th and the 18th of April. However, in the Conference League, we have two ties that get the early slot. So a little bit more exposure to, to them, which I find interesting. Uh, so we get Olympiakos against Fenerbahce and Victoria Pilsen against Fiorentina are the early ties um, in the, um, in the uh, first leg. And Fiorentina remain in the early, early slot, hosting Pilsen. But then we also get Lille against Aston Villa. So I think this is very well done to sh uh, share the spotlight onto the Conference League. I probably would have put the Conference League all in the early slot and have the Europa League in the later one. But that is a topic for another video. In any case, that was it for me from the Conference League. Um, if I think about it now, I've lost already two teams here. Uh, and I will lose another one for sure, so I probably will have to stack up a little bit on jerseys and that will not be easy because they are a little bit more of the obscure ones. But yeah, let me know what you thought about the Conference League uh, results, the Conference League draw. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!